So now we'll move on to the second iteration and we'll update the power levels using the SIRs that we just computed. So A would feed back the value of 1.6 to transmitter A, which has a desired SIR of 1.8. And remember our equation is the next power is equal to the ratio by the times the current power. So first let's calculate the ratio for each of these guys in here. So for A, the ratio is going to be the desired over the measured, and the desired is 1.8, and the measured is 1.6. For B, the desired is 2.0, and the measured is 1.97. So we have 2.05 by 1.97. For C, the desired is 2.2, and the measured is 2.75. So it's 2.2 divided by 2.75. So this is interesting because now for A, the ratio is greater than 1, whereas before we had it as less than 1. For B, it's greater than 1, whereas before it was less than 1. And for C, it's less than 1, whereas before it was greater than 1. So they've switched, and now we expect A and B's transmit powers to go up because their SARs is too low, and C's transit power to go down because its SAR right now is too high. So this is a process of overshooting and undershooting, which will likely occur many times until we hit the equilibrium levels. So we've undershot for A and B because we're too low, and we've overshot for C because the SIR is too high. And so this uh, we expect it to look something like this, where each of the SIRs will kind of um, go like this over time until they eventually hit where they need to be. So now let's do these power updates, which we can. So the transmit powers for A, B, and C are 1.4, 1.5, and 2.68 respectively. So we can take 1.8 divided by 1.6, multiply that by 1.40, and we would get 1.58 milliwatts to be the new power level. Multiply this by 1.50, and we get 1.52. So really close. So you see uh, B is very close to where it needs to be. This power level didn't change much at all because of that. And then for C, multiply this by 2.69, and we get 2.15 milliwatts. So that's how the updates are computed.